Hey friends, it's me Patrick God. Thank you so much for dropping by and as promised, here is the file download video now. Thank you very much for your feedback already. And now we can complete this tutorial with the download. So if you are tuning in here for the very first time, I mainly create web development tutorials with .NET and Blazor. And last week I created a file upload tutorial before I uh, used the file upload only to store images as base64 strings in the database. And now with the last tutorial, we were now able to upload any file you want any content type any file type and store it on the file system but that was only the the upload and i think without downloading the file this wouldn't help that much maybe so now in this tutorial we also cover downloading this uh, this file then to your machine again right so to do that to be able to do that we ha we have to store some information in the database really because microsoft uh, recommends to use random file names so this is really secure then use random file names to store the actual file and to get the original file name then back and also the content type of this file we have to store this information database and this is what we're going to do today now so we need some entity framework and sql server boilerplate stuff everything is available for free don't worry about that so we do that first and then we cover the downloads with some stream action and even some javascript i know not nice but it's still necessary and if you learned something then i would really appreciate it if you click the like button maybe subscribe to my channel don't forget the bell icon and if you want to get more tutorials maybe even in your inbox then you should consider subscribing to my newsletter because with that thing you get these videos in your inbox and also you will get early access discounts more information about .NET and my upcoming courses like for instance the .NET web development bootcamp so this would be interesting if that's something for you thank you very much for subscribing and now have fun with the tutorial all right here we are first a quick recap i already started the application and again please have a look at the video from last week you will find the link in the video description or in the pinned comment or in the info cards maybe so here's our project right it is an ASP.NET core hosted blazer web assembly application we've got a client project we've got a server project and a shared project now what we wanted to do with the upload again this is first a quick recap we've got the uh, index razor file where we use the input file component here and on change we do something and uh, again i won't uh, go into detail here please have a look at the first video if you haven't already and in here now we grab all the files so it can be multiple files from the component the user has selected and uh, then we create a stream out of this and then we make a web service call and this call looks like that here's our file controller and we put all the logic here just for this uh, tutorial for the learning purposes we could of course also add a file service for instance and then do all the magic there but here in this case i'm using a fat controller so the controller is doing everything and in here now well we have to do some stuff this is actually not really necessary so let's comment this out and uh, then this is important here right we upload the file or store the file on the file system in the uploads folder and now let me quick uh, open the file explorer here we are here right so i'm in the project folder here in essence we've got the client server and chat a project or the solution folder and we've got these projects here and in here in the server project then in the server directory we've also got the uploads folder this is important you have to create the uploads folder first and this is then where the files will be stored all right and then an upload result will be returned and with that stuff we then display the files here uh, on the website so let's have a look here this is how it looks pretty right so now we choose files for instance we can select batman open that and the crucial thing here is that it is recommended by microsoft that we use some random uh, file name here and now when we have a look here we see the file has been stored and we can drag and drop it here to chrome and then we see this is the actual file so let's just restart or reload the application remove this file here because the next step now is the download and to be able to download the files we 
well, we have to store some information because when we only store the files on the file system, then, well, you would have files here with random names and you would never know again what this file actually is. And this is where this uploads result entity comes into place. So we've got here, we've got a file name and a stored file name. So this is the original file name and this is then the file name, uh, the, the random file name that we have created. But again, to be able to download the files, we need more information and we have to store this information, this information in a database. And the first thing I wanna add here, and let me just stop the app because we have to uh, use some entity framework magic in a couple of minutes. So the first thing we need, since we, uh, we wanna store this in the database, we need an ID. And this is pretty simple actually. So prop, hit tab twice, and then we've got our ID. And another thing we need is the content type of the file. This is really important to get the proper stream then for the download. So this is also a string, could be null and we call this content type. All right, and now these information, we wanna store these information in the database. So we have to do some boilerplate stuff here in essence, we need Entity Framework Core and a SQL Server database. For that I recommend, well, I'm using a SQL Server database. Of course you can use choose any database you want, for instance, also SQLite, but I got a bunch of tutorials with that already on my channel. But anyways, if you wanna use SQL Server, I always recommend Googling for SQL Server here. Just go to downloads and then you get this express version here or the developer version totally free. And I also like to use the SQL Server Management Studio here to, well, to manage the databases, have a look at them, add some data and so on. So please, if you wanna do that too, just download that stuff, install it, it's totally free. And then this looks like that here. These are databases of my courses, the .NET RPG and the Blazor e-commerce course. But here now we will see in a minute the, the file database we want to use, all right? So first things first, Entity Framework Core. We need a data context and with that context, we will then be able to add the upload result information in the database. So right click the server folder and that's how I do it. I add another folder called data. And there was, <laughs> I prepared this a little and it seems there already is a folder called data. So let's just remove it and try that again. So in the server project, we add a new folder called data and now it works. So, <clears throat> and in here now we add a new class and we call this class data context. And this now uses the DB context. And to be able to use this, we actually have to install Entity Framework Core. And now there it is. Uh, what I just did is I was pressing Control and period on my keyboard. You could also use the quick fix menu here, the slide bulb. And then you see it here, install package, Microsoft Entity Framework Core, find and install latest version. So this is what we need to be able to use Entity Framework Core 6 in this specific case. And then we need a constructor. So with CTOR and tab, we've got our constructor, but we also need an argument. And this is of type DB context, and then options of this data context class here. We call this options and we have to use the base constructor here as well. And then really important, if we wanna see the upload results represented as a table in our database, we have to add a DB set. So what we can do is almost prop and then this is a DB set of the type upload results. And we call this, we could call this upload results. This would maybe be a better name because usually you just pluralize the name of the entity. But uh, let me call this uploads here. And what we can also do, well, first we have to use again the proper namespace here. And then since I don't like this warning here, we can already use the set here of type upload results. And we are done. And now to be able to use um, a migration and also 
accessing the SQL Server database, we need two more packages actually, and that would be the design package and the SQL Server package, and then we also have to install the .NET uh, Entity Framework tools. So first, NuGet packages. Right-click the server project, then manage NuGet packages. And we are on the browse tab, that's correct. I'm looking for SQL Server, and we've got Microsoft Entity Firma Core SQL Server. So this is the provider we need to access our SQL Server database. All right, accept. And then also design, and there it is, shared design time components for Entity Framework Core tools. Also install this, accept. All right, we're done with that. Another thing we need are now the uh, .NET tools. So what we can do is, for instance, .NET tool install and then dash dash global .NET EF. It will tell me that it's already installed and that's totally correct. But what I can do now is either uninstall it and then install it again or just uh, update it. So I could also use the update command for instance or I'm installing this now together with you. And in a minute, we've got version 6.0.7, so nothing new here. Let's just double check with .NET EF. Yep, there it is. Perfect, so Entity Framework Core now is installed. And now we need two more things regarding the boilerplate code. We need a connection string, and we also have to register the DB context in our program, CS. Now first, the connection string. We do that in the app settings JSON file of the server project. And in here now, we just open a new section called connection strings, already suggested here. Let's call this default connection. And now this is only for the local SQL Server Express. So it can be tricky if you need or choose something else. In my case, it's the server equals localhost backslash backslash SQL Express, then the database is file DB, and then we add trusted connection true. All right, so this is now our connection string. And the last thing now is registering the DB context, and we do that again in the program CS file with builder services, and then add DB context with our beloved data context now. And I guess we need some more using directives here. Could have used the global keyword actually, but let's just do it like that. And to be able to use SQL Server, we have to add something here. So this gets options. And in here then we say options, use SQL, use SQL Server, need another namespace. And then builder configuration, get connection string. Come on, yep, there it is. And then default connection. And one more parenthesis. So we are done with all the boilerplate stuff and now we can finally add a migration. To do that, again, we open the manage, uh, package manager console. We have to be in the proper directory. So this would be first a blazer file upload for our project or for our solution. And then we move to the server directory. Again, when we have a look here, we've got three commands, database, DB context, and migrations. And the first one we use is migrations. So .NET EF migrations add and then maybe upload results migration could have also called this the initial one because with that we will also create the the database now i won't go into deep uh, or i won't go into uh, much detail with these migrations here did this in other tutorials and i want to uh, really uh, have a closer look at the download functionality here. We've got a migration, we've got a migrations folder now here with our migration files. And now, oh, let's, let's just have a quick look. So in here now, we see that uh, in our 
up methods, it will simply create this table here called uploads with an ID, file name, stored file name, and the content type and the primary key here is now ID. And in case uh, we want to roll back this migration, we see that this table would be dropped. All right, so now let's run this and we do that with .NET EF database and then update and don't get confused by the update term here. This also means that the database will be created if it doesn't exist. This was fast and now let's have a quick look. We refresh the database here, the server and there's our file DB. Isn't that nice? All right, so here's our uploads table with the proper columns. Right click, edit top 200 rows, and of course, this thing is now empty. And now we want to store our files there. So, first changes we have to do is the file controller and in here the upload file. We already see this stored file name. All right, and now we also want to add the content type. And this is simply done with upload result content type is file content type. And real quick again, we see this uh, file here is a form file. So we actually get them here with the uh, with the actual call. This is a form file. And then we reiterate through every file here. And these information, or the content type information is then already there in this form file. So we can simply set this. And with that, we already have all the information we need. We've got the original file name, we've got the stored file name and the content type. The, the ID will be added by the database automatically. So what we can do now is we can access the context and add this new upload result to our uploads table. But first, before we can access the context, we have to inject it here. So for that, we say data context, call it context. Of course, we need the reference. And in here now, I say create and assign the field context. We add the underscore. And now here we can say context uploads, add and then upload result, right? And now down here, we just say await context save changes async, because with this add function here, it's not really stored, it's not written to the database. This only means that NDD framework knows, okay, when this coder here is calling save changes async later on, then I've got a couple of entities that I want or that I have to add in this database. I have to insert these entries then, all right? And this is everything. This is everything we have to do here to store the data then in the database. And the next step already is actually the download function. And this is getting complicated. Maybe we can test this first. So let's run the app. And I think that's the one. Again, let's try it with the Batman, for instance. And now let's have a quick look here in the data, or maybe first the file system. Uploads, yep, there's a file. And now here we refresh. And there is now Batman, Batman JPEG, this crazy file name and the content type is image JPEG. Nice. All right, so this works already. And again, now the download function. So back to Visual Studio and we can actually start with the controller here. Now this will simply be a get method, all right? where we only uh, provide the, the file name that we want to download. And this would be then the, the stored file name. So first get HTTP get, and here now this is public async task, return in an I action result this time, download file because we want to return a stream. So I action result works string well it would work with the other method as well but anyways let's do it like that download file and now first we want to have a look for this uh, upload result in essence so 
the upload result then would be await context uploads and we want to find the exact uh, entry entry with this stored file name so first first or default async we need another reference here and in here now we say for the upload result we want to look for the one where the stored file name equals the given file name all right, so this file name here has to match with the stored file name. I know this is also a null warning, but I don't care for now. And in here now, again, we need the proper path. And from that path, then we will create a new stream and return then this file stream. All right, so this is our path, path combine. And we've got the content root path here, name is uploads, and also the file name. All right. And after that, we create a new memory stream, memory, new memory stream. And now, with that, we create a new file stream with the a given path. So using bar stream is an oh, that's almost correct. File stream, file open. Yeah, that's that's already sufficient here. Nice. IntelliCode. Amazing. And here now, what we want to do is we want to copy this stream now to the actual memory stream. So I know that stream stuff is sometimes it's really confusing, at least for me. Don't know about you, but for me it is. So we've got our our file stream here. And with that thing, we use open because this file is already there in the download, uh, in the upload function here, we use create as a method because we wanted to store this on the database. Uh, on, yeah, database, but here for this specific case, uh, it's for the file system. And uh, I see some errors here. This is also confusing a little bit, but uh, well, oh, I'm missing a parenthesis again. So. Here we are copying this file stream now with the help of this path. So here we're getting the actual file, create a new file stream, and then we copy this stream to the memory stream. And when I have a look at this, I think we could do it a bit better, but it works. So let's just keep it like that. Now we have to set the memory position to zero, and then we return a file stream with the memory stream, the content type, so this would be upload result content type, and then also the file name, and that's it. All right, so we've got our download file method covered, and now we have to go to the client code, and the first thing it's a bit disappointing, but we have to add some JavaScript code really. And this is what I actually want to copy from the official Microsoft docs. Let me have a quick look. There they are. We've already got the file uploads, used some of the code here already last week, but here now, well, if you want to, you can, you can read that here, but this is actually the code we need. So, I could copy and paste it here, but let's let's just add it line by line so you see and we see together what is actually going on here. Because the thing is now, we uh, do not really have a URL that we can just click on and then everything works. We will use a button that is calling this function and in this function then we will create an anchor element and click on this anchor element automatically and with that then we are able to download the file. So it starts with window and then download file from stream. This is the name of the function. This is a new asynchronous function with a file name and a content stream reference. All right, and in here now, 
first we need an array buffer. And this is a weight content stream reference array buffer. Then Microsoft wants to create a blob, new blob with an array with this array buffer, array buffer, Jesus. And the next thing now is a URL. So URL create object URL and then with that blob and now we can create an anchor element. So document. I think it's nice that this is really vanilla JS. Don't have much experience with that. But it's nice to use that code, right? So anchor element href is now the URL. And then we can say anchor element download is the given file name or an empty string in case it's null. Then we click on this anchor element and then we remove it again. And in the end we say URL revoke object URL URL. All right, so again, this is really the code I just uh, copied from the from the Microsoft Docs in essence, but it works and that's nice. And now the next thing is we have to use this code in our index razor files. So now on the client project, first we need the JavaScript uh, runtime. So we inject it with add inject and then I JS runtime, call this JS maybe. And then we can create our button that uh, is then used to download the actual file. So button it is and on click, we say add and then we have to use a Lambda expression because we have an argument here we wanna use. Download file, this is a function we will create of course. Here we need the stored file name and also we need the uh, original file name to use this one for the file that we then download because otherwise the user would download a file with that crazy random string file name and this is not what we want here. So we close this again and here we just write download file and now regarding the download file function, this is the last thing we need. This looks like that, private async. And then task download file with again the stored file name and also the original file name like that and now again a new web API call. Again, have, let's have a quick look at the controller. Where is the controller? Here it is. Got our HTTP get function and I forgot something. Good that I had a look here again. I forgot the parameter of course. So this is our route, all right? So we've got API, then the controller name, which is file and then we use the get method, the get HTTP method, request method, and then also the file name as a parameter. All right, and this then has to match. And this is how this works. So now here we say var response await HTTP. This is our HTTP client, get async. And here then we use API file and then use string interpolation for our stored file name. All right, so that's that. And now we check if the response is not successful. Then, what a coincidence, we have our JS runtime here, so we can invoke uh, uh, a, J a JavaScript function here called alert, which just says file not found. 
but if we got success, then we can say our file stream now is the response content reader stream because remember we're returning a file stream and then we say using var stream reference is a new dot net stream reference where we set the stream to file stream all right and then we say await js and this is what we uh, why we actually needed the JS runtime invoke and in almost <laughs> invoke void async again and then we're now we're calling our function so download file from stream remember in our index html that's the file uh, the method name here download file from stream and this gets the original file name and also the stream reference move the colon here and i think that's it let me let me let me let me just save everything here and then restart this ourselves manually so now see it here again right the file name so this is really the file name that is then used for the download and in here uh, we are giving, uh, we are we are providing this file name. All right, so let's have a look at the application. Choose files. Choose Batman, for instance. We open this and we get an error. Of course, I was so sure that I forget anything. Something uh, on on lick. Why didn't you tell me, guys? Let's call that on click should do a live stream in this case then you should you should you could tell me if you wanted to or you just wanted to have a good laugh right and see me doing these errors okay we try that again with the batman hey something was happening here let's try to download this it works isn't that nice and of course i tested this before so that's why i got three batman images here and now on my other screen is batman all right now let's let's try it with these two for instance open them these are the file names that are stored in the database we can have a look here as well of course so uh refresh this all right and oh and you see that batman was although we got this uh error uh, the upload did work so that's why we get more batmans here but the download uh didn't because yeah because of the on lick event all right here's iron man nice and the last one spider-man works as well isn't that great now of course there's one big thing really missing but i think you are smart enough to do that by yourselves guys otherwise please tell me and then i will do my best to add another quick video about that when we now reload the page, we see no files here, but we've got some files in the database, right? So what you would then need to add is of course another get method where you get all these files here with the, uh, or the complete upload results with the stored file name, the content type and the file name, well, the original file name, and then display them in a table or whatsoever. Uh, but essentially you do the same thing again, right? Because here now in our in our HTML, in essence, uh, we got the same information. We've got the uh, the real file name. We've got the stored file name from the upload result. Then just the function, and with that you can build your table, your diffs, whatever it is, and uh, then well, add a button to download then the proper file. So I hope. You know what I mean. And uh, now let me push this to GitHub and then you have the complete tutorial, a file upload, really upload any file you want, not only images, and then also the file 
download. Thank you very much for watching. That's it. It is complete. File upload, file download. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you learned something. If so, you know the drill guys. Thank you so much for clicking the like button, subscribing to my channel, bell icon if you want to get a notification for new videos. Currently every Tuesday a new video is coming out and uh, also maybe interesting for you the newsletter. So if you want to get these videos early in your inbox and also more information about .NET and Blazor and upcoming courses, then the newsletter might be something for you. Thank you so much for subscribing. And if you want to watch more videos, check these out here on the site. Maybe there is something for you. If it is .NET, Blaze, or maybe even Angular, yep, that's also on my channel. Stay tuned and maybe subscribe. This would mean the world to me. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope I see you next time. Take care.